Hello, I'm Matt the Beauty Shaper and in this video I'll be explaining what ketosis is, how fasting affects ketosis, fat loss, and diabetes. Ketosis is the process during fasting when the body runs out of glucose to use as energy and it starts using ketones in the fat tissues, hence it starts burning fat and sparing the muscle. It's important to keep the body hydrated as much as possible during this ketosis stage because the body does not keep the fluids during this state. When the body does not break down muscles, it's called an anti-catabolic effect. Under normal circumstances, after two or three days of fasting, the body starts breaking down muscle to fuel itself. As tissue is broken down, the body normally burns unhealthy damaged or dead cells along with tumors, abscesses, and fat deposits before it starts breaking down healthy cells and muscles. During the fasting process, proteins are used from the dead cells and recycled. When the body has only fat to burn, ketones are produced and the body is forced to use fat as energy. It first burns fat from the liver and then it turns to fat from the body. When there's less carbohydrates in the body to burn as fuel, glucagon is the body's preference of burning fat instead of muscle, and it can continue passively, whether exercising or sleeping. This happens when the supply of carbohydrates, which is glucose, is not available, and the glycogen stored in the liver runs out. During a full water fast, the stores of glucose run out and muscle starts breaking down, but at a slow rate. The first few days of ketosis could sprout feelings of euphoria and increased energy with an added bonus secreted by the pancreas and the liver. Then it converts fat into fatty acids and then ketones. While in the ketosis state, there's hunger loss. It's been found that thin people that fast have actually been noted to experience less energy than overweight people. Fasting should be stopped once uncontrollable hunger strikes, since the body is signaling that it needs more nutrition. From past experience and personal knowledge, I have to say that when I fasted in the past, I had jittery feelings and dizziness, and I also had a temporary euphoric feeling for a few hours, similar to when I was on the ketogenic diet. Now I'll talk about fat loss and fasting. According to a 2012 study on obese women published in Nutrition Journal, it was found that you can only get minor weight loss from long-term intermittent fasting alone. Weight and fat mass loss was successful with both the restricted food diet that had 4.1% uh, weight loss and the restricted liquid diet had a 2.6% weight loss. A restricted food diet or a liquid-only diet can be successful in weight loss and fat loss when combined with fasting for at least one day a week. Although either of these two diets without exercise can lower the chance of heart attacks, adding exercise can only lower the chances even more. And as an added bonus, the study also found that cholesterol levels also went down from dieting and fasting. The calorie-restricted food diet lowered cholesterol levels by 20%, while the restricted calorie liquid diets reduced them only by 7%. On the other side of the spectrum, a 22-year study on 735 somewhat overweight men in their 60s found that those with lower fat-free mass and higher fat-free mass had an increased mortality rate than those in the middle with normal fat-free mass. Fat-free mass shouldn't be confused with BMI, which is the measure of the body's fat based on the height and weight, whereas fat-free mass is basically the total lean body mass without the fat. It's important to know that in both studies, the subjects were sedentary with no significant exercise regimen documented. I have to say, I've tried the intermittent fasting thing before, but I never tried outright fasting or a liquid diet. Nonetheless, I know people who have, and after some time has passed, I did see a notable reduction in weight, but they were also sluggish. Some people I know have also used liquid diet fasting in conjunction with 
spiritualism when trying to achieve life goals. And they say that it not only enhanced their motivation, but it helped them stick to their diet and meet their goals. During fasting, dieters try to restrict calories from carbohydrates, protein, and fat. This is a form of starvation. It's starving the body by not giving it what it needs to maintain itself. It's also known that carbohydrates turn into glucose for energy and excess protein turns into glycogen and the body glucose for energy. If the body doesn't have enough carbohydrates to turn into glucose for energy and it doesn't have enough protein, the body turns to fatty acids, ketones, and some nitrogen for energy. After prolonged fasting, the body ultimately gets protein from muscles breaking down into amino acids and then it leads to muscle loss. Now I'll talk about skipping meals and intermittent fasting and diabetes. Many people believe that diabetes makes the person overweight, but this is rarely the case. Most diabetic people do not become overweight. Overweight people become diabetics. Some overweight people don't become diabetic at all because their bodies are metabolically healthy, such as th their fasting glucose, triglycerides, and other organs are functioning normally. There was a study conducted at the University of Pittsburgh on people with type 2 diabetes. And in this study, there were two groups in the study. One group was given 400 to 500 calories a day, while the second group was given 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day. After almost a year, the low calorie diet group lost more weight than the group eating the higher amount of calories. The study also concluded that none of the participants from either group had any medical problems from skipping meals. In fact, they had healthier results, even slightly normalized glucose levels and a lower risk of heart disease. This study was a dietary only evaluation conducted with no exercise. There have also been studies that show benefits of intermittent fasting in diabetics. This is because it has been proven that intermittent fasting produces insulin sensitivity. It's this sensitivity to the insulin that actually helps in fighting diabetes and helps in losing weight. This insulin sensitivity also becomes even stronger as more weight and fat is lost. In fact, this continues for up to two to four hours before insulin levels starts dropping down to normal. It's been found that carbohydrates increase insulin sensitivity levels the most. Insulin sensitivity is when the body needs an average amount of insulin to process glucose. When there is insulin resistance, the body needs more insulin to process glucose. And when there's a shortage, the body becomes a target for medical problems. There are many diets out there that serve different purposes. Some diets help lose weight, others help gain weight, and so on. While one diet works for someone, another diet might not. Diets should be tailored to your desired goals, and not all diets are the same. And while certain ones may be hard for some, others may be easy. Lastly, remember whether you're fasting or not, if you're committed to nourishing your body with nutrient-dense food, it'll help support you in your weight loss journey. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel so I know there's interest in the information I'm giving out. My goal is to spread the news on health and fitness so that more people will be conscious of their weight and they'll eat more healthy, they'll eat enough to be satisfied while eating more sensibly. Thank you so much for watching my video. Have a great day.